Hey guys, Mike the Gaming Dad here and welcome back to the channel. Recently I produced a video on outpost building where we covered off the basics such as choosing a suitable location, how mining, power and switches work, how to mass produce adaptive frames, XP farming and finally constructing your base with defences. We'll pick up where we left off in this second instalment and my aim this time is to go through how to properly install cargo links both into system and interstellar. This will then allow us to upgrade our power game using fuel generators. We'll also look at transfer containers and how they work, and we'll also flesh out our outpost by introducing robots and furnishings. And lastly, and probably most importantly, the perks you are going to want to get if you want to upgrade and maximise your outpost game. So our starting point in this video is going to be the perks that will not only benefit you when building your outposts, but they'll unlock new research and building upgrades and allow you to construct outposts in much harsher environments. They'll also save you a lot of time and resources in the long run. The reason I'm beginning here is, if you plan on investing time in the outpost building mechanic, I highly recommend you do these early. It will save you a lot of time and effort in the long run. And this may not be to everyone's taste, as it will involve grinding levels, but you'll reap the rewards of it. So the first perk I class as essential for outpost building is research methods. Not only is each subsequent rank of this perk going to save you on materials, at rank 4, sudden developments happen twice as common. And when I say twice as common, this happens so often it is crazy. I'll demonstrate this later, but I cannot stress enough how important this perk is going to be. The second perk is Outpost Engineering, and again push this all the way to rank 4 if you can. At earlier ranks you'll unlock improved modules, at rank 4 though all module costs are halved, and this is an incredible saving if you plan on making the most of outposts. Lastly in the science tree is Planetary Habitation, and for the purpose of this video we'll only need rank 1. This will allow us to construct outposts in locations with extreme temperature, but further ranks will maximise the locations you can build on, and also increase the number of outposts that you can build. I did also want to mention that in the science tree, if you plan on building outposts in locations with flora and fauna, you may want to look at botany and zoology. Our outpost here on Bessel 3b doesn't require these as we can't farm either of these here, but on other planets and moons with life you can set up animal husbandries and so on. Moving to the social tree, and this perk I'd say is the first nice to have one, not essential like the three we have just covered in the science tree. This one is outpost management, and I'll likely only unlock rank 1 of this during this video I think, but the further you go through this rank, the better the perks are. Additional robot slots at rank 2 are very handy, as is crew at rank 3, and finally double the extract output is a great rank 4 perk. And lastly is a perk in the tech tree. Again, this is a nice to have perk. Invest in this if you want to be able to unlock security robots, and these provide you with greater protection at your outpost, but it's not an essential. So to unlock all of these perks we are going to need XP. I think I may have said to delete the industrial workbench and the bed that we placed outside as we could move them to the interior bit, but if you plan on grinding XP I recommend keeping these outside. So the method as covered last time is to sleep. Sleeping on Bessel 3b cores is an incredible amount of time to pass due to the disparity between local time and UC time. And time means your extractors are busy gathering you the materials you need to spam build resources. So let's have a go at this now. See here how we have hundreds of resources. We can set about building adaptive frames and ISO centered magnets now. And now look, we've already gained one more skill level. And what I haven't mentioned yet is you will need to invest in these skill trees in order to unlock the later skills, so it's okay to put additional perks in if required. So for example, in order to unlock outpost management I'm going to need to spend six more points in social to actually reach this. So I'm going to start off by putting a point in gastronomy. And then now we're down to five. Now let's go sell our goods and repeat that process. Being this encumbered will drain your oxygen levels quickly, and I don't think I mentioned this last time, but if you want to move at normal speed you can do, it's fine. CO2 buildup won't kill you, you'll lose health but you won't die. If you can see here now, our health bar's going down. If I start to run around, oh our ship's not here, I'll have to go get that. But if, yeah, if I start to run around now you'll see your health drop, and then it'll go red, 
but then it stays. It'll never get any lower than that. So you don't have to worry about moving really slow. Another point to add, in order to progress through each rank within the research methods perk, you'll be required to manufacture increasing numbers of food, drinks, drugs and so on as shown here. And this is why I added the gastronomy perk. It's not essential, but we knew we needed six perks in social in order to reach outpost management anyway. And gastronomy gives you access to more recipes. So as we have a perk to utilize again now, let's go make some stuff. Enter build mode and what we need is over in the crafting section. Let's build a cooking station and a pharmaceutical lab. Now let's make a few recipes. Alien jerky will do, and alien liquor. These need to be unique by the way, you can't just spam the same one five times. Distilled water as well. Now let's go over to our pharmaceutical lab. Oh, it looks like Sarah's busy checking out the new gear as well. Here, let's build an AMP and antibiotic paste. And there we go, the task is complete. Now we can move on to rank 2 within research methods. This is similar to how progressing through the outpost engineering ranks works. Within each rank you'll be required to build different outpost modules. So let's just demonstrate how I do this. Enter build mode. And now for getting through this task I really don't care what I build. Everything counts as long as it's unique. Apart from I think decor items. I can't remember if decor works or not. But most of the things do. So let's build some power units. and lights. A few storage containers. I'm going to delete all of this at the end by the way, so placement doesn't matter at all. Now for some buildings. And what is great about this is, variants also count as unique. So take these hallways for example, I can build different versions of this, so let's do that. Right, we're almost there. Let's build a few crafting stations. Come on, we need one more. What can we build? Oh, an extractor. There we go, 25. And now with that complete, let's just delete everything and you get your resources back, which is great. Zero cost incurred. Now with that done, we can progress to the next rank when we get another skill point. I mentioned at the start of the video the importance of research methods rank 4 to outpost building. I have this at rank 4 now, so let's take a look at what happens when we research something. Researching is your only method of unlocking new and more advanced modules, so you have no choice but to do it, and the further into it you get, the more exotic the resources become. I'm going to go down to... Let's try power generation 3, as I have a lot of resources for that one already gathered up. Yeah, see here, we already have most of these. Let's see what we end up using. So immediately here we have a sudden development, plus 4 tau grade real stat. And this means we have skipped that part and haven't needed to use any materials. Let's move on to isotopic coolants. Another overflow of one nuclear rod, so we've saved 25% of our resources on that one. And another sudden development, three control rods and one supercooled magnet. That's amazing, that actually skips one and a half requirements. And we have another one, so that's four sudden developments in a row. A power circuit this time. Let's try for five. Yes, five it is, but only one tungsten this time, so that's actually not a lot. So we did get an overflow but only one unit, so we're actually six short here. 
And let's try the last one, lead. No, oh, we got another overflow. Oh, so actually it's filled all six tungsten I didn't have. Well, there you go. We've completed the research and used probably half of what was required, if that. And that's already on top of the 60% reduction you get anyway at rank 4. So yeah, you pretty much need this skill if you're serious about outposts and research. But what happens if you find yourself short of something exotic, and you're not sure where to get it? Here for example I was researching decoration rank 3, but did not have enough luxury textile to complete the research. It's good practice if you are building an outpost and intend to progress research for the cutting edge modules to stock up on materials as and when you visit settlements. Don't wait until you need something. And luckily there are some great stores close by in New Atlantis. Two stores I used a lot can be accessed via the NAT and taken a ride to the commercial district. Once here you just want to head straight forward. And the first store is here, Outland. And the other one is directly opposite, the UC distribution centre. Let's head into Outland first. And this is where you'll want to head to pick up manufactured goods. As with all stores, the stock isn't always the same, but you'll find unique items here like these Aldermite drilling rigs. I highly recommend getting into the habit of buying a wide range of goods each time you visit, even if you don't need it at the time, as there's a chance you will do at some point in the future. You can always build storage modules at your outpost so you don't have to haul these around with you all the time. And then opposite here we have the UC distribution centre, so let's take a look inside there as well. And this is your home for any organic or inorganic resources, and the stock therefore is similar to Jemison Mercantile, but I found they have a greater selection and more rare and exotic materials. The stock varies each time, but if you are lucky enough you can find things like luxury textile here. And if you don't find something in stock that you know they sometimes have, don't worry, you can always sit down and wait. 24 hours on Jemison is 50 hours in UT time, and the stock is refreshed every two days. And if it's specifically a luxury textile you need, like with many other resources, there is somewhere you can farm it. The place you want to go is the Schrodinger system, and then to Schrodinger 3. And then when here, land in a spot that says hills or mountains, not the sandy desert as shown here. This is what you are looking for, the swarming fox bar, one of the predators on this planet. Swarming fox bats, named after their bat-like facial features, will drop luxury textile, and this is a more reliable way of getting hold of this hard-to-find material. And now we can complete research decoration rank 3. I thought it would be worthwhile to show you what perks I have now. This character is level 46, so it's taken quite a few levels to get here but this will make things a lot smoother for you from this point onwards if you plan on setting up a web of outposts in the galaxy. So in the social tree we have outpost management number one which allows us to place additional cargo links at outposts and if we build cargo links at six different planets we can level this up and unlock additional robots. In the science tree we have outpost engineering rank four to unlock all of the best resource modules and only pay half of the resource costs. We also have research methods rank 4, and this was my first priority, before you complete most of the research, to again save yourself on time and effort. We also have planetary habitation rank 1, and rank 1 is fine for what I want to show in this video, but later on you may want to invest further in this skill depending on where and how frequent you plan on laying down routes. And then finally in the tech tree we have robotics rank 1, and this is so we can build defence robots at our outposts which I found to be the most reliable way of defending yourselves from raiders, and especially on planets with aggressive predators. And I'll just show you my research as well. So under outpost development we have all three manufacturing levels finished. Resource extraction 1 and 2. Decor 1, 2 and 3. Horticulture 1 and 2, and domestication 1 and 2, although I don't think we'll use those in this video. Power generation 1, 2 and 3 which are an absolute necessity in my opinion. 4 I haven't completed as we don't have special project skill yet. And we have robots 1 and 2 and then finally outpost defence 1 and 2. 
And finally, hopefully to show what I was talking about earlier about resource hoarding, look at my current mass, 1060. And this is exclusively made up of resources that I was picking up on my travels before returning to my base. A lot of these are exotic and unique items as well, because unless you've made a shopping list of everything you need for every research and every module beforehand, just pick it up. You might not need it, but you also might, and I'd rather have it and not need it than need it when I don't. Credits are so easy to come by in Starfield, so I just buy it all and store it here for later. Right, the boring part, the grind, is done, and now for the fun parts, starting with cargo links. First, we'll look at what I call is an inter-system cargo link. Yes, the second version, Bethesda calls an inter-system cargo link, but I prefer to call that an interstellar link. Why? Well, the first version you can use to transport goods on the same planet or moon, or from another planet or moon in that system, at zero helium-3 cost. Now, to me, that is an inter-system link. The second one, you can use to transport goods from another star system, but it costs helium-3. So to me, that is interstellar. I don't know why it wasn't named that way, but nevertheless, here is our first cargo link. So if you remember last time out, we couldn't build a fuel generator, could we? Because we didn't have any helium-3 on Bessel 3b. So let's start off by bringing that gas in. Bessel 3a has helium-3, so let's travel there. Now Bessel 3a, like all other bodies in the Bessel system, is frozen, and this is why we needed Planetary Habitation Rank 1 in order to build an outpost here. So I'm going to land up here in the helium deposits. And now let's place our beacon down and make sure we have helium in the vicinity. Yes we do. So first we need extractors, and I'm going to place two basic ones to start off with. We also need a power source, 10 power in total, so let's make sure we have that. There we go. And now let's build our cargo link on this side. Now because we want this to be our outgoing link, we want to link our resource collectors to the red storage crate. And this is outgoing. Green is where incoming resources are stored. You can send your resources to a storage container as well, and then to the red crate, it doesn't matter, but they need to be linked to the red crate if you want them to be picked up and transported. So now that's done, we need to head to the control console on the cargo link. On here we want to find our outpost on Bessel 3b. It's the only available one we have currently, so there will be only be one shown here. And press yes, we want to link them up. And that's it, it really is that simple. So the Helium 3 is going to fill up in this crate here, and then what will happen now is a cargo ship is going to land here, intermittently, and then take the resources to Bessel 3B. Back on Bessel 3B now and we've had a sleep to pass some time. And here we have an incoming container vessel. Let's see what they've dropped off for us. Three hundred and ninety two helium, nice. So now what we need to do, we need somewhere to store this gas. So let's build a new container over here. There we go. And now I'm going to link the green incoming container to our new gas storage unit. And now that Helium 3 is going to fill this up and keep filling it up with each delivery. Should we have a go at setting up a generator now we've got a fuel source? These fuel generators give you more power than your wind turbines or solar panels, even the more advanced ones that we now possess. I will just add though, at this point you can skip fuel generators and go straight to nuclear reactors if you want, which offer even more power at zero fuel cost, but I just wanted to showcase how you would set this up should you want to. As mentioned last time out as well, I'm going to build mine within the foundations of the building to hopefully offer some protection from raiding parties. If your fuel source gets blown up, unless you have secondary power supply and direct to your defences, you just lost your turrets. In fact, let's not build just one, let's build two, as I've got the materials for it currently. 
And now what you want to do is link your helium container to both generators. And what we should see now is our total power increase by 20 at a time when both generators power up. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is delete all of these wind turbines we built as they look a little messy. Better fuel sources means less of them and that means less clutter as well. So that's how we set up an inter-system cargo link, or what I call an inter-system cargo link. Now let's look at how we set up a cargo link to transport resources between star systems. The only visual difference between this next one and the first is a small gas container at the rear, which needs to be supplied with helium in order to function. So we transported helium from Bessel 3A, but if you wanted a Bessel 3B system yourself, but didn't want to grind to Planetary Habitation Rank 1, this is how you'll need to get your helium. I mentioned it earlier, but everywhere in this system is classed as a deep freeze, so you can't build on these without it. So I'm going to travel somewhere now with a more temperate climate that is within another system. I'm not going to be transported helium-3 here though, as we may as well take another resource, but if you needed helium, the process is the same. Let's go to the Denebola system, and then specifically Denebola 1b. You may know this as being the location of the Mantis mission. And I'm going to land in the north where there is copper and helium. Now that we are here, the process remains largely the same. Set up our beacon and make sure we have the resources we want. So now that's down, let's build our cargo link first. And notice how when we hover over it we have an operating cost, and this won't function without it. Let's place our helium extractors first, and what I'm going to do is, let's place better versions. We can't actually build the industrial level ones as we're lacking resources, but we can place the commercial level, so let's build those. One of these might be sufficient, but I'm going to place two just in case. Now I'm going to build a copper extractor, as this is what we want to send back to Bessel 3b. And what you need to do now is link these to the gas container at the back. Don't make the mistake of linking them to the front unless you want the resources to be sent somewhere. Notice here how sometimes it'll snap to the outgoing container. And we don't want this, we need it to go over here. Now what should happen is this will slowly fill with helium and turn green. Come on. Gosh, he's taking his time. There we go, and it's now ready to go. And now let's head to the console. And now link this to our outpost. And that is it complete. So it has another step, the power source, but it's still really simple I think once you get the hang of it. What I'm going to do now is, and I should have thought of this before, let's build better helium extractors on Bessel 3A. We did all the research and then went with the basic options. And we can actually build one industrial one here, so let's do that. And now we need 30 power, so let's delete the solar power. And instead we'll build a nuclear reactor. There we go. 
and this should ensure that we never drop power to our generators on vessel 3B now, as this is going to provide us with way more gas. So what we need to do now back on vessel 3B, let's build another storage container so we can move our copper from the cargo link. And this is now filling up with copper, which is good. Now that we're bringing more resources to our outpost, should we look more in depth at how fabricators work and how you can set up systems to make rare and exotic materials yourself? So in the first video, we looked at a simple adaptive frame fabricator. But now that we have all of our research completed, we now have different fabricators that we can build. 30 different ones in fact, 11 simple, 10 compound and 9 multiplex which build very rare and expensive manufactured items but also cost the most resources. So let's start out with a simple fabricator. We have copper available now so let's see what we can build. Oh so we can actually build reactive gauges so let's set one of them up. Let's look for something else. So this ostentinic manifold needs nickel and iron, which we have already, and also reactive gauges, which we can be building next door. So let's have one of these as well. Not quite handy, so now we need to provide our reactive gauge fabricator with copper and aluminum. Well copper is easy as we have just set that storage container up, so link that to here like so. And now for aluminum, I can't actually remember which row had this, so let's just check. Okay yeah, it was the top row wasn't it? There we go. And now for this one we need nickel and iron. So iron goes to this row here, so let's pull from the inside one. And then nickel is the bottom row here, so we need to pull from this container. Now what I'm going to do is build a new warehouse container because I've got a feeling this one is still full of adaptive frames. And then finally, let's link the reactive gauge fabricator to the warehouse. And then to the ostentinic manifold one. And then finally from here, back to the warehouse. So now what should be happening is both items are in this warehouse module. But what if you wanted to step up your game and build a working compound fabricator? Let's take a look at one of those shall we? And the process is exactly the same, it just requires a bit more planning. Let's try and make super cooled magnets, and for this one we need iso centred magnets, neodymium and isotopic coolants. Well iso centred magnets are easy, we can make them with nickel and cobalt which we have. Expanding the outpost bit. So let's pull from one of our cobalt containers, which are the bottom row here. And then from nickel, which is this one. And then I'm also going to drag this to our warehouse container as well. So what I'm also going to do now is because we've got two fabricators using nickel, let's upgrade our nickel extractor to a commercial version, because this poor extractor is working overtime now. So that's one manufacturing component ticked off, and what else did we need? Isotopic coolants. So let's have a look at this fabricator shall we? So we have an issue here, because ionic liquids and tetrafluorides we won't find either of these on vessel 3B. But it's ok though as we can bring these in via another cargo link, so let's set up another interstellar link. 
and there is a planet nearby which has both resources. Let's head to Procyon A, specifically Procyon 3. And I landed here near the water and copper resources. And here is an area where the ionic liquids and tetrafluorides that we are looking for can be found together. So let's place our beacon down and get to work. First, let's set down an extractor for the liquids. And then tetrafluorides. And now let's build our storage containers. And we need liquid and gas. And I'm going to place these here. Now we need a power source. Because this planet has a thick atmosphere, we get a lot more out of our wind turbines. So let's build the base version of that, as that is sufficient. And now we need a cargo link. Now let's link it all up. And what I'm going to do now is actually build the fabricator here, as we may as well make them here and then transport the finished goods back. So let's build a second turbine actually as well. And now link the containers to the fabricator, and then the fabricator to the cargo link. Now we have a problem. Does anyone know what it is? Yes, we don't have a power source, do we? Helium-3. Well, luckily for us, Procyon-3 has a moon, 3A, and this contains helium and iron. So let's build a link here. As always, let's set up our extractor. Then our power source. Our containers. And our cargo link and now link it all up. And then link this at the control console to Procyon. And notice here we have two options. We want the standard cargo link, not the interstellar one. Now back on Procyon, let's link our incoming container of helium to the other cargo link which needs the fuel. I don't think it matters whether you do it direct or through a container like I'm doing here. And now that's done, let's head up and deal with the alien life sat on our landing pad. Now we can link up this cargo link back with Vessel 3B. And what's going to happen now is the isotopic coolants which are being stored here will be picked up and sent back to us. And it looks like we've got transport already incoming which is good. What I'm going to do now is set up another warehouse module and I'm actually going to link up this fabricator here to the new one because I think the first one is actually full already. Yes it was. Yeah so our iso centred magnets can go here instead. And then what we also want to do is... Oh it looks like the delivery is already here. Uh, we want to link up this incoming cargo bay with the warehouse module as well. And there we go, isotopic coolants. So we're almost there now, we need one more resource, which is neodymium. Well luckily for us, there is one location in the Bessel system which has this, and that is Bessel 2, as shown here. Now it is an exotic resource this, so you may need to search to find it. I landed up here and was successful. I actually landed in a spot which has neodymium and beryllium. We don't have either of those resources back at Vessel 3, so we may as well take both of them right. 
You know the drill by now though. Extractor 1 and Extractor 2. Build a storage container. Link those up. Build your power units. Build your cargo link. And then link that up. And then finally head to the control console and send this to Bessel 3B. We have a lot going on now on this moon. We have our original Helium 3 cargo link. We have this one which is bringing in copper. This one over here is bringing in isotopic coolants. And now this newest one is for neodymium and beryllium. So let's build another storage container for our new resources. And now what we want to do is get our super cool magnet production line up and running. But we do need some more power though so let's build that over here out of the way for now. First of all link our neodymium up. And then our isocenter magnets and isotopic coolants. So our first delivery because it came so soon only gave chance for two neodymium to be farmed. So let's sleep a while. And there we go we're up and running. Now this is going to be busy building super cool magnets for us continuously. You can keep pushing this further if you wanted. If we go to the next step we have a microsecond regulator here which needs a super cool magnet and a tau grade rheostat. Well the latter we can build here no problem. We'd only need to find a location with europium and lithium and I'm certain there will be a planet or moon with both of those on. I'm not going to do this though in this video as I'm conscious I don't want to spend the entire time talking about fabricators. But if we did, we need more power units. And then this fabricator, as just mentioned, is easy. It needs copper and beryllium. Well we've got both of those now, don't we? So let's link that up. And you can link fabricators directly to fabricators as shown here. You don't need to send them to storage. So as you can see here, it's just the final two ingredients we need. Now I wanted to show you all this to highlight how easy it is to set these up. It's just very formulaic and requires a bit of patience. But unless you're manufacturing these for selling or XP farming, I don't suggest trying to do this so you can use the goods yourself on your base. And why is that? Well this could just be my personal opinion, but let's take a look at what uses a microsecond regulator. With our research maxed, the second security robot requires one in order to build it. Now I've got three of these already, which I picked up in a store at some point. And I'm not saying don't build fabricators by any means, just think of what you'll use them for. It's a lot of effort to make them for construction when you can just buy these goods anyway is what I'm saying. This isn't the only thing that uses them, I think you need them for turrets as well. But yeah, there's a lot of hoops to jump through just to get to the stage where you can actually build these for yourself. So weigh up what it is worth to you. Shall we talk about transfer containers as I've not mentioned those yet. A transfer container is basically a storage container that you can access directly from your ship. And that's it. So it's a handy tool, but it's by no means necessary. They're a quality of life tool I think. I'm going to disconnect our super cool magnets from here and instead I'm going to link them to the storage container. Now let's go take a look. Our super cool magnets are going to be sent directly to here. And now what we can do on board our ship is open up our cargo hold and then go to Bessel 3B outpost. And from here you can transfer the contents to your ship. So if you wanted to manufacture these as a way of making credits for example, you can fly off and sell them direct from your ship. You'll find that with a lot of cargo links at one outpost, it does tend to be quite noisy as well, as you've pretty much always got one of them landing or leaving at any one time. But shall we get some more upgrades done at our base? We did all the research at the start but we've not really upgraded many modules yet. So let's start off with a few more resource collectors. Obviously we can upgrade these to gather resources a lot faster than before. So I'll upgrade our iron extractors to the commercial version. 
and then link that back up. Let's also do Cobalt. And then finally Aluminum. And now more importantly let's upgrade our defences, so I'm going to take off these two turret mark 1s and let's get the mark 3s instead. I think we may have enough to get all mark 3s in either ballistic or laser, but let's see. So let's build one here, and one here. And now let's delete the rest of them all. Build one here. And then yeah, let's go with the best laser versions as well. And we now also need more power, so let's get a nuclear reactor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this down here. Then at least it's hidden from any incoming raiding parties from this side, as they won't see it below the landing pad, is my thinking. Now I'm going to expand my base and build another hab, as I want to make some living quarters so I can get a few crew members here. Let's also build a watchtower. I'm still to this day not clear on exactly what this does other than providing a vantage point. I think it may just be superficial but yeah let me know if you know what it does. And then let's build some robots. So notice how we can build a max of three robots currently. If we had another skill point we could unlock rank two of outpost management and get three more of these which is worth the investment if you can get it. But for now let's make do with three. So the sanitation bot improves inorganic resource production by 10%. The garden mini bot is organic so we don't need that one. The security mini bot might be my favourite. He just rolls around and makes noise if he sees a threat like an alarm system. But he's apparently very serious about his job. The engineering robot increases the production rate of manufactured items by 10%. The logistics model A is for all resource types by 5%. Power management robot increases the output of generators, so that's another useful one. And then finally we have the security robots. This one is less mobile but better defensively. And this is the dog one, so it has better movement and is good for a perimeter defence. So actually I can't build this one because I used all my microsecond regulators. So I'm going to delete one of these and build the Mark II instead, and then we can have an attack dog at least. So for robots I'm going to build both security types. And then for this base let's go with the manufacturing one. Obviously build whatever type suits your outpost, you can build multiple security bots if you wish, but I'm not sure if stacking the other bots gives you stackable benefits or not. Should we take a look at the interior now? I've fleshed it out a little bit since the last video. So this first room here is the canteen area where our cooking station is. The newest building here is our bedroom, as I realised I didn't have a suitable room that wasn't made of glass, so my plan with this outpost now is to get crew in here like Lynn and Hella.
This room here is our crew station and I've added mission boards and a bounty clearance. Whoa, Sarah, can you not sneak up on me like that? Jesus. I'm trying to show off our outpost here. This hub is currently just storage. I did a few items in just to flesh it out. So this area is... Hang on, is that Sarah? How did you get over there? Anyway, yeah, this is like the crew breakout area, I guess. We've got a gym, refreshments, a pool table, TV and so on. This is the same hab room as the bedroom, but the glass top version. So this is the military hab where our weapons workbench is. And then we have the medical bay where the research lab is now placed. And we've also got the pharmaceutical lab in here as well. And over here is a rather basic bathroom. Bathrooms are really lacking in build mode I've found. Plus I was losing the will to live at this point of manually placing everything. Up here is... Yeah, I've not done upstairs actually, this is all empty. And then down here is the industrial workbench and more storage. I added in a lot of old stuff in here. I thought it'd be cool to give it the appearance of being a really old outpost. So there's like knackered old chairs in here, old computer stuff, old beds and mattresses and so on. I wanted to give the appearance of this being the stuff that was probably here decades ago. So yeah, that's it guys. I'm probably going to end the video here now. It's not possible to show you every combination of how to build everything. And there's not really an optimum outpost set up. With so many different planets and moons, it really depends on what you want to get out of it. But I hope the tools I've shown you across this video, and the last one, help you in setting up your outpost in Starfield. I'm Mike the Gaming Dad, and I'll see you next time.